Hello, Ender Sword here again, this time with a video on the Zindi Aquatics and basically the math surrounding them and the refineries that you do uh, through the NX01 uh, to unlock the rewards. So the basic way that the loop works is that you open a chest using Zindi Scraps to give you a token uh, which will let you into the aquatic systems. Once you're in there, you're hunting for tech modules uh, in order to then open another chest, which is then going to give you opportunity coins, which you'd use to then open one of two chests. Uh, and there's also rare opportunity coins you get from the battleships in those systems, which then give you the option to unlock another set of chests, where again, you have two options of a risky and a safe path. So I wanted to talk about the risky and safe chests first. Um, because I've seen a couple people kind of speculating on which one should you really be going for and what is the better odds and so on. So these drop rates obviously are going to change as you tear up your ship. Um, the, the rewards are going to be different. So this is more telling you kind of what the method is to determine which one you should do. And it may not be consistent for every tier. Uh, I'm just gonna use the example of tier one because that's where most people are now, but you can use this same sort of math and approach to look at it uh, as you progress as well. So in the risky opportunity chest, you're gonna have some chance of getting five of each of the tokens, in this case, a 30% chance to get what they call the unlucky pull. There's a 68% chance to get the lucky pull, which is just the middle pull. Um, so 350 to 225 and 110. And then a 2% chance only of getting the jackpot pull, which is a lot bigger, 2700, 1300, 650. So how would we evaluate this? basically you look at what is the expected value out of all these things. So if I was to just pull this a whole bunch of times, uh, what is the expected value that I would get out of it per pull? So in this case, you're basically just taking the probability of what they call the lucky pull, 350, uh, 350 times the 0.68% chance, plus the 30% chance of the five, plus the 2% chance of the 2700. And when you put that in, the expected value for the uncommon is gonna be 293.5. So if you just did this over and over many, many times, it's gonna to tend towards this value. Obviously the unlucky or the jackpot one is pretty rare. Uh, you're only gonna get that like one in 50 times. So the odds that the math really evens out. It's going to take a long time for that to stabilize. But to give you some idea what your expected value is, uh, it's 293. You could do that same thing for the rare and the epic, and you get expected values of 180.5 for the rare and 89.3 for the epic. Again, this is going to change as you tear up the ship. Um, it's going to be different uh, as that goes up, but you can use this same little bit of math to find out what your expected value is. Once you know that, you can then make a comparison to the safe chest. So the safe chest is gonna give you the exact same amount every time uh, with no risk or variance to it. So you want to then look at it and say, okay, the expected uncommon from the uh, risky one was 293, or I can just take 255 safely. In the long run, you'd be better off taking the uncommon uh, risky. Uh, that one is going to work out to be better. But when you look at the other two, it actually is better to take the safe path anyway. So not only is this more stable, but your expected return is actually 10 higher for the rare and five higher, uh, almost six higher for the epic. So even if you're kind of looking to gamble, there isn't really an advantage in this case to taking the risky one. You're only kind of looking for that one jackpot and you might get 
better than expected luck, but in the long run, you're actually going to be better off taking the safe path here, except for the uncommon one, uh, which I think, again, in the long run is going to be the one that doesn't quite matter as much. Uh, you're probably going to end up running out of things to use your uncommon on a lot quicker uh, than the rare and uh, the epic. So that is for the normal opportunity coins. Then next we have the uh, rare opportunity coins. This one only has the rare and the epic in it. In this case, uh, there is a slightly better distribution. So we've got 30% chance of unlucky, 65% chance of lucky, and a 5% chance of the jackpot. And what's important here is that the lucky is a little bit beefier. So if we again do the same thing, 735 times that 0 0.65, uh, 5 times the 30% chance, and 1900 times the 5% chance, we get an expected value of 574. Do the same thing on the Epic and get 276. This time it compares a bit more favorably to what the safe pull is. Uh, so you're going to get 574 compared to 550 in the safe route and you're going to get 276.5 compared to 250 on the safe route so in this case in the long run you are better off going for the risky pull so on the normal opportunity coins the safe route is actually the better route in the long run in this one the risky route is actually the better route in the long run but there is a caveat to this one the normal opportunity coins Every chest simply costs 100 coins flat. On this one, there is the escalating value. So you can pull one chest for 30 or two chests for 100, <clears throat> and same on the risky one. So what you're very likely going to do if you have more than the 30 tokens, if you have 30 tokens, you'd probably want to pull the risky one. If you had <clears throat> 60, you're going to want to pull one risky and one safe before you ever pull 100 of the other one. So because otherwise you're going to pay 30 for one and 70 for the next one when you could do 30, 30, and then only go above that if you have a lot more to spend. Uh, and so far I haven't had like an excess of these uh, that make it easy to spend. There's also a longer cooldown on these than there are the other chests. Um, which kind of makes that that harder as well so in this one the risky one better in the first one the safe one is better but in this one you would probably pull risky safe then second risky second safe um, in that order now in terms of killing the ships themselves again we have another probability uh thing happening when you go into the systems there are interceptors there and there are battleships there the battleships have a 30% chance of killing you outright. So you have a 70% chance of getting through safely uh, where it doesn't fire a mega cannon, basically. Uh, but if it triggers the mega cannon thing, then the fifth weapon in every round is going to be this cannon that hits you for billions of damage. But it only will trigger 30% of the time. Uh, if it triggers, then you basically are instantly killed and you're just sent home uh, and you lose that token. If not, then you're probably going to successfully kill it, provide it you can still kill that ship, and then you're going to get a chance to do another one. So what's important here is essentially the probability of getting consecutive battleship kills. So there's a 30% chance, obviously, that you're going to be killing zero, which means that there's a 70% chance that you're going to kill at least one. Uh, then there is a 49% chance that you're going to be able to string together two in a row, a 34% chance that it's going to be three in a row, 24% uh, chance that you're going to get four in a row, 17% that you'll get five, and 12% that you'll get six. And you can go beyond that. Uh, but each time basically just multiply the old odds by 0.7, and that's going to tell you the odds of continuing uh, your streak in this. The important uh, thing for these guys is to note that they contain about 10 times the amount of the tech modules as the normal interceptors that are there. So it's definitely a lot more lucrative to go after them. It's just a matter of probability that they could 
randomly kill you at any point and completely end your run. So there are a couple ways to approach this. There is strategy one, which I call the save room for dessert strategy. Basically, uh, this is what I've seen most people do. You go into one of the systems and you kill the interceptors until you've used up a certain amount of your hull. And then you continue to kill the battleships at the end until you ultimately die and get sent home. So the idea here is I can go into one of those systems and let's say that I get nine kills of the battle cruiser or, or of the, uh, they're all called cruisers, but nine kills of the interceptors. And then I'm going to go after the enhanced cruisers, which are the battleships. Uh, so I've left a certain amount of my hull. Uh, in order to be able to kill some of the battleships and then I'm going to go after them until ultimately one of them kills me either because its weapon went out or because you know I ran out of hull uh, even fighting normally. So basically what you're going to do here is calculate what the expected value of that is going to be. Uh, so in this case if I use uh, my loot uh, like the amount that I'm getting for those kills uh, I'm basically going to multiply the number of interceptor kills that I can get plus the expected value of the battleship kills that I can get from it. So in this case, if I can kill nine of the interceptors and I'm getting 3,500 from each of them, uh, so I think their base drop rate is about 1,500, uh, but you're going to add on loot officers if you're going to use them. You're going to add on the tech bonus that you get. You can get a plus 200% uh, drop bonus from the Borg favors themselves. Uh, you're going to add that in to the equation and figure out what you've got. And then the expected value of what you're going to get from the battleships. So the way to calculate that out is basically the drop rate times the odds of killing one plus the same drop rate times the odds of killing two plus the same drop rate times the odds of killing three uh, and four, etc depending on what you're leaving in terms of your hull there. So if I leave, uh, let's say, a quarter of my hull left, then I think I can fight uh, four of those in a row. Uh, I'm giving up the number of interceptor kills that I could get to do that uh, to take the chance at the battleship kills. So for every battleship that I'm kind of leaving room for, uh, leaving room for that dessert, there's a chance, basically I'm giving up what I would have got from the interceptor from it, and I'm looking to try and kind of maximize this equation where my expected value is the most. Because uh, of the way that the weapons work, the battleship does seem to be a bit stronger. Both of them use a a uh, weapon that crits 100% of the time in the first round that you fight them. For the interceptors, it's an energy weapon that goes off. For the battleships, it is a kinetic weapon that goes off. So depending on the crew that you're using, you're going to be better at fighting one or the other. I found in my own play so far that basically killing one of the battleships takes about the same amount of hull from me that killing two of the interceptors uh, takes. It's about that amount. So for every battleship that I am leaving room for, essentially, so if I decided to leave room for four, then I'm intentionally not killing eight of the cruisers. Uh, and I'm taking the chance that I'm going to try and kill that many battleships. But of course, as I make that number bigger and bigger, there's a greater chance that I'm going to die uh, from its death gun that randomly goes off. So you basically never want that number to exceed what you would have given up for the uh, interceptor kills. So it seems that the sweet point for that is probably about three or four, depending on what your kill to death ratio is uh, in terms of killing interceptors versus killing battleships. If I have to give up eight interceptors to leave room for four, or I leave six interceptors to leave room for three, what are the odds that I'm going to send home early and I'm just going to leave all that on the table versus what are the odds that I actually successfully get those three, four kills in a row? And it seems beyond four, you're starting to now get to the point 
that it's definitely never worth it in the long run to take that risk because you're the number of times that you're going to get five or more in a row versus the number of things that you would have got from just killing the interceptors anyway uh, turns out to be negative. So hope that kind of makes sense. You're just looking at the drop rate and then looking at the reduced probability as far as you go and then compare that to how many interceptors you would have to give up uh, in order to go for that strategy. And of course, this can be choppy. The more battleships you plan on killing, the more random you're making things uh, essentially in the long run because you're always kind of going to be, again, you may get a jackpot every now and then where you did string together four or five, six in a row, but most of the time it's not going to be like that. So picking a more conservative number is going to be more consistent for you in the long run. But uh, this is a strategy that I've seen most do uh, so far. There is, however, a second strategy that is going to become available as you get your tech and as you level the ship up, which is that, of course, there is more than one system of these things and there's more than one level of these things. So if you're in a position that you're able to fight uh, 10 or more of the interceptors and fight multiple of the uh, battle cruisers, you have the option of just going up to a higher system anyway. So the systems start at level 40 and they go, uh, you know, all the way well into, I think they go up to 60. Um, I obviously haven't gotten that far. There is warp locks on them, but there are warp enhancements in the Borg favor. So I think just the first level of that is going to get you to the level uh, 44 or 46 system. And then as you tear up the ship uh, even farther than that, and as you tear up the tech even farther than that, um, What's important to know is that for each two levels that you go up, and it goes 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, and then it starts to go 51, 53, etc. So at 50, it, this pattern changes, but from 40 to 50, you gain 50% loot per level that uh, per two levels that it's going up. So going from 40 to 42, it gets a 50% larger drop from 40 to 44 again 50 and 50 so in this case the 40 is dropping 15,000 approximately it's always like plus or minus seven percent and the 44 is dropping 34,500 basically so now you want to consider I could go into a system with the 40s and I could kill 10 interceptors and then try for three battleships or I could just go into the 44 system, know that I only have the hull to kill three of these things anyway, uh, but just forgo the interceptor part, and then each time that I get one of these battleship kills successfully, I've got more than double what I would have gotten at the lower system. So you kind of are playing into the fact that it's uh, just ignore the smaller ships and just go for that big win because if you can kill one of that ship that is two, four, six levels above what you would safely and comfortably farm, uh, then you're going to be potentially better off in the long run. So I think as people kind of develop their ship and they get a sense of how many of these they can tackle, you're going to be faced with the option of, should I go to the low system and get a bunch of guaranteed kills with my uh, against the interceptors and rack it up and then try for some battleships at the end. Do I go to a middling system where I think I can try to kill three to four battleships only in a row and go for them? Or do I go to the biggest system that I can possibly go to and take one shot where I have a 70% chance to kill one ship and potentially get more loot from that one ship than I would have for killing uh, three or four things in the lower one. So that seems to be the point that we're at. It's going to develop a lot with uh, the crewing that you get. Uh, most people don't have Archer yet, but Archer is going to give a lot of loot bonus to what you're doing. So far, I find that the best crews for killing the interceptors is really just PMC, um, that 
because it fires a critical energy weapon in the first round, mitigating that with Chen seems pretty effective in terms of number of kills. But in terms of loot that you actually get from the ships, leaning towards the loot crews, because of the importance of the battleships, really leans you towards not survival, but basically going big and getting those uh, kills because... Uh, survivability is really not the issue because of the way the battle cruiser works. It's going to send you home uh, constantly and there's nothing you can do about it. So trying to play it defensively is definitely worse than kind of swinging for the fences. So I've been using uh, ePicard, eData, and 5 to go into the systems. Uh, Doctor down below decks. I've only got one below deck so spot so far. So uh, I'm just kind of kind of maximize the loot. So basically, whatever it is listed there, with those officers uh, on it, plus the tech that you get from the Exborg, I'm able to get over 500% of what the listed loot should be uh, versus if I just use the normal crew, then I'm getting 300% of what it is because you get the normal plus a 200% bonus. Once you have access to Archer, his base ability is already 300%. Once you add synergy to him, it's going to be a lot higher than that. And again, you can put somebody like the Doctor below decks. You're going to be able to get him to like six seven hundred uh i think at the end of it uh in order to enhance the loot and that seems a lot more beneficial than trying to look at survival and what deals with things most efficiently and you're better off just taking that crew into a system where you can shoot big and take the chance of getting uh this stuff from the uh battleships and uh kind of open chest that way so i think that that is the approach to this and i think as we figure out what the power of the ship is depending on what your levels are depending on a whole lot of factors you're going to find the sweet spot and i think that sweet spot is ultimately going to be what system can i go into where i can get one or two of the battleship kills and just put everything on that with a full loot crew and i think that's going to end up being the way to go um so yeah, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. I don't know if the ship has been super, super popular in terms of sales, so I don't know how many people this video is going to be super helpful to. But uh, if it does, leave a comment below. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment below. A lot of it's going to require you to basically look at what your capabilities are and then find that point for yourself. And of course, it's going to change over time as you improve the ship, as you improve your levels, as you improve your research, everything like that. But find your own sweet spot where, where can I get one or two kills in one system and then kind of aim for that. Uh, and then in terms of opening the chests, you know, good luck with the jackpots, but that's the way I would go about it in terms of the safe and risky. Have a good one.